And welcome to Meet the Falcons, the first edition of the spring semester. I'm joined here, I'm Steve Shar, joined here by Mike Fahey, our men's lacrosse head coach in the seventh season. Thanks for joining us, Mike. Yeah, thanks for having me. Mike, I want to kind of dive into getting to know you a little bit so the fans can learn some things. Uh, your seventh season, an 81-34 and 34 overall record with a 45-7 and seven record in the Midwest Lacrosse Conference. Last season, a 2019 MLC regular season and tournament champions. Uh, let's kind of talk about last season, the regular season championship undefeated. Uh, was there a point in the season when you kind of started to feel like it could happen? Um, yeah, I definitely, I, I guess I was more so just hoping that it would happen. Um, we didn't really talk about it a lot until we actually, um, beat, I think it was Cornell in the last game of the season, um, regular season. And then that's kind of when it became a reality. We didn't talk about it a ton, um, during the season. We obviously knew going in that that was our goal every year, um, to be regular season conference champs. And then, uh, we just kind of took care of business throughout the whole year, and it became a reality at the end of the season. Number one seed, you had the opportunity to host the tournament championship game against Aurora, who over the course of history had kind of had your number for a number of years. Uh, what was it like getting over the hump of beating Aurora in the regular season, but then also in the tournament championship? It was great. It was something we've never done as a program, so it was really exciting. Obviously, to beat them at their place under the lights in the regular season was awesome. We played a great game. Um, and then uh, we got to host them, um, and it was a great day, beautiful day. We had a ton of fans out there, I think over 500 fans. Uh, so it was probably the biggest crowd we've ever had. And then we didn't play the greatest game, but uh, we did what it, what it took to, um, to beat them and, and get over the hump and, and get to the NCAA tournament. So super exciting. I was super pumped for all of our guys. Very excited for our coaches, our assistant coaches who put in a ton of work, and uh, it was an exciting time for the program. Is there one moment you maybe remember in that tournament championship game? Is there one moment? Um, no, I no, not not specifically. It went. It seemed like it went by quicker than any other game uh, that we've ever played. Um, I think just at the end of the game, the clock hit zero. We were, we knew it was over, and that was a. I was just super excited. I want to ask, we had talked a little bit after that game, um, near the end of it, our, our live stream had, had tuned to you and you were kind of walking away from the play and before the, the water bath came. You said that was the somewhat of an emotional moment for you because it kind of had capped the season off to the point of getting all the goals checked. Was it just kind of an overwhelming experience knowing that like the clock was hitting zero, you were the champions, the student section was rushing the field and your players and everything? Yeah, it was definitely overwhelming. Um, obviously, it capped off the season, but, you know, I was a graduate assistant when I first started here, and we went through a lot of tough times with a lot of great times, and then taking over in the 2014 season, you know, it took a couple more seasons for us to finally beat Aurora in 2017, and getting to the championship four years in a row before then, losing every single one. It's just a lot of work, and it kind of was like a culmination of everything that we put in since – you know, we started the program with Jeff Roberts, the first coach, and, um, you know, it was, it was a really exciting time. You win the regular season tournament championship. You get to go to the NCAA tournament for the first time in program history last year to Denison, up 2 nothing, real early in that game. What were some of the takeaways for that, you as the head coach, but then also for the program as a whole? Uh, it, was, it was definitely an experience. Um, you know, I think for our guys, it – you know, they, they knew that they could play with anybody. Um, you know, and we came out, we, didn't, we weren't scared. Uh, we kind of ran with those guys for the whole game. Um, I think it was 9-6 in the fourth at one point. And they scored a couple goals at the end. I think it was 12-6 the final. But, um, they, you know, they ran with them. I think there was a couple adjustments maybe we could have made going into the game. And, but it was, you know, it was awesome to be there. Um, it was great for me to be there. But it was all about the guys. Um, you know, they put in all the work throughout the year, throughout the season. Um, and we just, you know, help them along with the game plan and make sure we're doing the right things. But it was all about them, pretty much. 2020 season it ended with a four and two record. Um, four of those wins, you outscored the opponents 51 to 20. The offense is really rolling. What were some of the takeaways from this shortened spring season? Um, it was interesting. We didn't. We, I guess we didn't really know the type of team we were going to have going into the fall and. We had a really good fall season, and the guys are really meshing well uh, coming into the spring season. 
no, and we were challenged. We played some really good teams. The uh, North Central team was very, very good. Um, you know, we played Benedictine, who was in top two or three in our conference, and handled them pretty well, which was exciting at home. Um, you know, in the last game we played MSOE, they're, they're tough. They had, I think, 13, 14 seniors. They're kind of a similar team to what we were last year. And, um, you know, it was, a, it was a battle with them. But, um, but no, I was excited, um, you know, being four and two, obviously. Um, you know, we think we could have had another very good season, um, you know, and I think we could have made a run, you know, at the end. Um, you know, we're, we're kind of young in spots, so I think it was taking some time for guys to, you know, gain that experience. experience. Um, and, but, yeah, it was overall, it was, it was good. Four and two was solid, and, you know, we, wish we, we could have kept going, but not much we could do about it. You're a Buffalo native. I do want to ask, being in Packer country here, how do you deal with that? Because we've had some banter back and forth. Not team. a big Packers fan, but, uh, you know, I'm from Buffalo, huge Buffalo Bills fan. Um, I don't mind the Packers. Sometimes I just like to get under people's skin, but, um, but I'll support them. You know, if they're doing well last year, it was a fun season with them. And uh, the Bills are getting better, though. They got a good quarterback, and we'll see what happens down the road. Uh, I do want to ask, how did you get into the game of lacrosse? How did it start? Uh, being from the East Coast, it, uh, a lot of people, you know, kind of grew up playing it. It's uh, it's a popular sport back here. My my older cousins played it, um, so I kind of saw them playing it, um, and then just kind of got interested from there. Um, we kind of helped start the program, like at our middle school, um, and started playing there. And then I went to a private high school in Buffalo and did very well there. Um, and kind of just kind of just grew from there. When you were in high school, did you guys win any conference titles? Yeah, we won my senior year. We won conference titles. Um, and they didn't have state championships for private schools yet at that point. So we just won our conference title, and that was it. But it was, a, it was exciting. Uh, we, did, we did really well. We had a lot of D1 guys on that team and very talented team. So, yeah, it was exciting. From there, then you went to Onondaga Community College. You won a national title there. Um, how did you choose to go there um, again, instead of anywhere else? I was getting a couple D3 looks, um, nothing that really was that interesting to me. Um, a couple, two of my friends um, had gone out there and looked at the, at the school right outside of Syracuse. And, uh, you know, I, I ended up going out there and they, you know, they welcomed me there to their program. So um, it was exciting. The first year that I went there, they just opened brand new dorms, um, which is kind of rare for a community college, I think. So, um, so we got to live on campus and kind of went through the whole experience and we were, yeah, we were undefeated, had a really great year, um, had a lot of really solid kids on that team and yeah, won the national championship as a freshman, which was really exciting. Uh, you were a goalkeeper there, I guess to backtrack to the question before, how did you get to be a goalkeeper as opposed to a different position? I always played goalie in everything, hockey, soccer, all through high school. Not a lot of people wanted to play goalie and I just like hopped in there. Um, I, I like Dominic Kashik, who was a former Buffalo Sabres hockey goalie. So I would play hockey goalie sometimes when we'd play um, street hockey. Um, so it kind of went from there. Um, and, yeah, I just enjoyed playing goalie in every sport it, I played. Is it because you didn't have the speed to be a forward? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm slow. I'm too slow. <laughs> uh, from there, you went to Lee's McCray College in North Carolina for a couple of years. Uh, I guess what was the decision to transfer out of state um, to continue playing lacrosse? Well, the community college was only two years, so I knew I had to go somewhere else. I looked at a couple other schools, a couple D2s and a couple D3s, but I went down to this school in North Carolina and visited them and had a great experience. The coach was awesome. Um, the players were great and really kind of welcomed me there. Um, had a little bit of an athletic scholarship, which which helped, um, but I really liked the unique location of the school. It was up in the, in the mountains of North Carolina. Um, lived by a ski resort lived on a ski resort for a couple of years. So it was, it was uh, exciting and kind of a unique place. Um, there was people from all over the country that played on the team. So it was a really good experience for me to play down there, I thought. Over the course of your collegiate playing experience, was there a point when you thought coaching was something that you could do or wanted to do? Yeah, I think going into my senior year, um, from my junior year, um, I just really enjoyed the experience as a student athlete. Um, I enjoyed, you know, all the athletic events, like supporting other teams. I just really liked the atmosphere of, you know, college and university athletics. Um, and, you know, obviously loved the sport. And um, I just thought it was something that I could get into. Um, and I was thinking about getting my master's degree as well, too. So 
you know, I kind of kind of going into my senior year, I thought it, it could be a possibility down the road. You are our first graduate assistant coach for men's lacrosse here. How did you, I guess, find the position opening? Uh, or did Jeff Roberts, our first coach, call you? Or I guess, how did the connection happen there? So in my senior year, I was pretty much just emailing every single coach that I could come across online to see if they had an assistant coaching job or a graduate assistant job open. Randomly just kind of came across Concordia. Um, and Jeff Roberts used to be um, the assistant at Mars Hill College, which was about an hour away um, from the college that I went to in North Carolina. So he kind of knew me, knew my head coach from college. Um, and that's kind of how that got set up. Um, and then later in the summer um, of 2000, I guess it was 11, um, they added like the SPA program um, with the emphasis of in athletic administration. So it kind of like worked out perfectly that they just were adding that program. Um, and then that's kind of how it got set up. So um, and when I came out here, I had never even been to Chicago, never even been to Wisconsin, didn't visit. I just packed my car up and drove out here. So it was, it was pretty exciting. So how, how was it your first two years as a graduate assistant developing and building a program from scratch? It was exciting. When I came in, it was, uh, we were going into the second year of the program. So we did have freshmen, um, and then we were welcoming the second class that we ever had as a program. So it was definitely exciting. Um, now, obviously, being a coach under Jeff Roberts, he, he knew a lot. Um, he was very, very experienced. Uh, he was at several Division One, Division II schools um, as a coach. And so I learned uh, a ton of things um, that I should do as a coach, how to handle myself. Um, so it, it, it was really exciting. Um, and then the second year um, that I was a graduate assistant, we made it to the conference semifinals for the first time in program history. So that was obviously really exciting. Um, actually, no, sorry, maybe that was the first year, but whatever. It was it was exciting, um, and uh, it was great to get the program there. I think it was the first year. How, how much do you stay in contact with Jeff Roberts, just maybe as a mentor or, or maybe kind of sharing ideas, I guess? We talk probably two or three times a week. Um, and, I, and I know when I get that phone call from Jeff Roberts, it's going to be at least a half an hour plus. So. <laughs> It's, it's good to keep in touch with him. Though. And I see him on the road recruiting and things like that, too. So so you're done with your graduate assistant position at Concordia, and then you get a job at Beloit as an assistant there. And maybe two weeks? At least in our <laughs> talking, you, I don't weeks. even think you unpacked the U-Haul. Two or three weeks. A couple weeks, um, moved down to Beloit College, and uh, got a phone call that Jeff was – Coach Roberts was leaving Concordia, and – I kind of thought about it and should I go back, should I not go back? And ultimately I made the call to Dr. Barnhill to see if he'd be interested and came out for a, for an interview, met with the team and called me, I think the day after, and I said he wanted me back as the, uh, as the coach. So it was definitely an exciting time and moved all the way back to Milwaukee from below. Was it good knowing that your, your time as a graduate assistant and everything that you, you had helped build uh, was valued knowing that, our athletic director, Dr. Rob Bonner, wanted you back instead of, say, opening the position up, you know, for a national search? Yeah, it was definitely exciting um, to hear that he wanted me back. Um, I had a good relationship with the, with the guys on the team. Um, I believe that was the first senior class that year in 2014. So we had a really, really talented team that year. I believe we were 14 and four my first year as head coach. So I knew it was going to be a challenge, but I also knew that we had the potential to be very good. Um, so, yeah, I was definitely excited, and I was super pumped that he, uh, that he kept me on as coach. Now in your seventh season, 80-plus victories, at what point in your coaching career did you, you feel like you had all your systems in place and everything was the way you wanted, um, you know, in terms of, of approach or, or system or, or style? How, at what point did you feel like, you know, th this is really how things are supposed to go? Probably after my first couple of years, you know, moving into maybe like 2016, um, we really felt like we were gaining uh, a lot of ground um, as a staff, uh, as a team, as a program. You know, I think we were becoming a little bit more respected. Um, but I've also had really, really good assistant coaches. Um, Kieran Lemming was was the first assistant coach that I had. Uh, coach Roberts hired him before um, before I had returned, so he was outstanding. Um, and then I had Dave Scarcello, who was who was a stud for us. Uh, he, you know, division one uh, lacrosse player and now he's, he's been a division one coach since he left uh, our program. So he 
brought a lot of great things to the program. And then obviously hiring uh, Spencer Fuqua was, was huge for us. He, you know, played at one of our rival schools, but he brought in a lot of, you know, great information, great knowledge, uh, a lot of great drills for us. So, you know, he's kind of, um, he was, he was awesome to have. And, uh, you know, then coach Kellen uh, Asmundson that I have now, um, he's going to be done. Um, Shortly, he was, you know, obviously a player for us, had, had a couple good seasons for us. Um, so, you know, that was that was great to have him and, and now Coach Bennett as well, too. So, um, so yeah, but it's, I would say probably around 2016, we were kind of be just being a little bit more respected and kind of broke out from there, I think. During your seven years and watching your program grow and develop and how you run things, there have been spurts where you can put up 20 plus goals and it's coming from every angle and it's spread out across the roster. But there's been one consistent factor in your time and that's defense. Does that go back to you personally being a goalkeeper growing up throughout your life and, and always playing defense? Or I guess what is the mindset of your program always having been and and are so solid defensively? I think it kind of just goes back to, we always want to have, or try to have the best goalie that we can have. I think it starts with our goalie and, and our face-off guy. Um, and we've always been pretty successful there. You know, even going back to the start of the program when Zach Davis was in that, Thomas Mueller was a great goalkeeper for us. Um, you know, uh, Emin O'Malley, um, Garrett Wolford, I mean, all those guys at the goalkeeping position. Um, and, and um, you know, so I think it kind of starts with those guys. Um, and, you know, then the guys that we put in front of those guys. So our defense has always been strong. We've always had really solid deep holes and you know, deep middies and all awesome. So it kind of just starts with that. Um, and that's always kind of been really important for us, um, you know, as, as a group. I want to talk about this season. Um, the, the weak things, you know, eventually happened where everything got canceled and the season was done. Kind of leading up to it, there was this feeling going on that that could potentially happen. How did you go about discussing with your team of, of trying to not think about it and you know, practice day by day and play game by game? And if it, it happens, it happens. It, did you have discussions with that at all? Um, yeah, it was, it was very challenging. It was kind of, it was kind of crazy and surreal. Um, as we saw some schools back East were kind of canceling their season and, and canceling games and, kind of thought it was crazy at first. And then we heard Beloit was canceling things. So it kind of got a little bit more real for us. Um, and uh, we kind of knew that it was kind of coming down the line, or at least we thought it was. And it was almost changing every day. And kind of going into that, going into that MSOE game, um, you know, we were, I was definitely thinking about it in the back of my head. We tried to not talk to our guys about it, but they kind of knew that it was coming. They knew about the boy game being canceled. So they kind of thought something was going on. And then as soon as that MSOE game was done, we got the email from our university saying that everything was going to be moved online and um, in terms of classes. So, you know, at that point it was becoming even more real. Um, and then the next day, which would have been Thursday, uh, kind of just came into the office. You know, we were ready to, to watch film and, you know, get ready before spring break and kind of give the guys a couple of days off. And then, you know, just kind of as that day progressed, uh, you know, the NCAA canceled their spring seasons and their spring championships. And, um, you know, we just, we just knew from that point on that everything was done. So we met with the guys on Thursday afternoon and, you know, just kind of let them know that, you know, this is probably going to be the last time that, that we'll be meeting as a group in person. And, um, you know, we kind of just talked through everything and it was emotional. Um, obviously for me, this is my, this is my career, this is my life. And, um, but it was more emotional for our seniors because um, they kind of, kind of knew that that was going to be the last time that they would have played. Um, so yeah, it was, it was definitely emotional and, and uh, it was a lot to deal with, but um, that was kind of how that happened. Do you think two kind of a two part question, do you think that's, that moment, that meeting is one of the most difficult times you've had as a coach. And then the second part of that is, did you have maybe a senior at all say anything or anybody have, you know, a message? Yeah, that was definitely probably, I mean, top three, if not the number one most difficult time as a coach um, so far. Um, it was just so unique and something that has never happened um, before. So that was definitely emotional. Um, yeah, our seniors were just, you know, um, I think most of, if not all our seniors said something and um, they were just pretty much talking about val valuing, you know, every time that they step on the field, don't take anything for granted. Um, 
you know, because it can, it can end just like that. Um, so that was kind of just kind of the mood and what we talked about uh, that day. Certain things on a positive note here, let's get some rapid fire and random questions to learn more about men's across head coach, Mike Faye, your favorite food. P- uh, pizza and Mexican food. Ice cream, favorite ice cream. Chocolate chip cookie dough. You mentioned favorite pizza. What's your best topping? Uh, just pepperonis and mushrooms, I think. I like that. Is there a, a favorite pizza joint you have? Uh, back in Buffalo, Imperial Pizza, it's called. How do you like your steaks cooked? Um, medium. Medium, probably. Your favorite movie? Oh, gosh. I don't know. Probably anything with Denzel Washington or Mark Wahlberg. Are you a guy that will watch movies over and over? Like you have stacks of DVDs in your in your apartment? No, not really. No. Your favorite TV show? Uh, I love Shark Tank. Really? Which yeah. uh, host, I guess, is your favorite? Mark Cuban. Okay. What show are you binge watching right now on TV at night? All American on Netflix. All right. Your favorite music? I like classic rock. Um, that's probably probably that. Your favorite band? The Tragically Hip. What kind of music do they sing? Never heard of them. I like rock and roll. Okay. Uh, last concert you attended? Oh, gosh. I don't even know. Probably something at Summerfest last year. Favorite vacation you've been on? Um, this past summer, I went to Banff National Park up outside of Calgary, um, Yellowstone and Glacier National Park. That was probably my top vacation. We had talked about that a little bit. How long were you there? Because that was a, an extended Almost trip. two weeks. Yeah. yeah, almost two weeks. It was great. What are you driving right now? A Volkswagen Passat. What's your favorite hangout spot in Buffalo? <laughs> my parents' house right now. <laughs> Favorite animal? Oh, gosh. I love dogs. Pretty si- simple and basic. I don't have one, but I love dogs. Did you ever? Did you grow up with a dog at all? Yeah, we had one growing up. Okay. Favorite Olympic sport? I love watching the swimming. I love the skiing, the downhill skiing. Um, I think those are all pretty exciting. Track and field stuff is pretty exciting, too, in my mind. Favorite professional athlete? Oh, man. I don't really know. I don't know if Have I you ever one. met a pro athlete. I met Derek Jeter before. I was in an elevator with him. Where was that at? In New York City. Okay. What is in your Amazon shopping cart at the moment? Nothing. I, not, I don't think I've ever bought anything on Amazon other than really? like DVDs and shows. Yeah. Where do you do all your online shopping then? I don't do a lot of online shopping. I like to, I love shopping in person. I hate buying things online. This has got to be a hard time for you then. You can't go to the store. I know. I know. <laughs> I haven't bought anything recently though. A website you have to visit every day. It used to be laxpower.com, but um, weather.com. I'm a big weather fan. Check it daily just to know if you can get outside during these tough See times. See if I can get outside and go for some walks. All right. Thanks, Coach, for joining us here on Meet the Falcons. And next time, uh, next week, for Meet the Falcons, we will have a new head coach to learn more about. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.